Wilfred. They forgot. Because they must. Except for one. <laughs> Whoa. See someone sitting there. Silhouette. Who is that? Oh, look at that, the TARDIS. They call it the legend of the blue box. Oh. Oh. It said there's no such thing as coincidence. Who is this? Perhaps he's coming back. Oh, that would make my Christmas. That's the master, isn't it? You will come with me. Hold on. Better lock the TARDIS. <sighs> Love the look of this now. It has a really cinematic look Thank about it. Car. <laughs> returning to this world. It is returning. And he is returning. And he is returning. returning to so the master, right? Hey, okay, he's about to see some stuff, right? <laughs> he knows who that is. Comes to us every night. I think all the peoples of the universe dream of him now. That man is dead. I held him in my arms. I burnt his body. Then there is that post credit scene. The master is dead. And yet, not post credit, but did not see. fingertips, red nail polish. <laughs> Part of him survived. Oh. Darkness heralds only one thing. The end of time itself. <laughs> that kind of reminded me of Satan. Oh, it's the lady again. Final biometrical signature. <laughs> you can't bring him back, you can't. Sealed with a kiss. They're giving up their life force for the master. The drum beat. The drum beat, right. Love this theme. Is he gonna knock four times? Whoa. Oh yeah, fell from the sky. <laughs> Great shot, look at that. One, two, four, four. Have you told them who I am? You promised me. No, I just said you were a doctor, that's all. And might I say, sir, it is an honor to see you again. There you go. Oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Take a photo. Quite the looker. <laughs> no, people have waited hundreds of years to find me and then you manage it in a couple of hours. Well, I'm just lucky, I suppose. No, we keep hmm. on meeting Wilf over and over again, like something's still connecting us. Yeah. What, what's so important about me? Exactly. Why you? Hmm. That's kind of harsh. If I'm killed before regeneration, then I'm dead. Even then, even if I change, it feels like dying. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Everything I am dies. Some new man goes sauntering away. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had to. <laughs> Good old dog. She's not changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he is. Sean. Hey. And then sometimes I see this look on her face. Like she's so sad. Hmm. But she can't remember why. Residual. He's got heaven. But I did some things that went wrong. I need. Oh, my word. <sighs> the people of that world did sleep and shiver. Who is this narrator? So knowing the dawn would bring only one thing the final day. Oh. Do you remember my father's land back home? Back home. 
We used to run across those fields all day. <laughs> the theme's kicking in. The sky. Listen. <laughs> Whoa. Imagine that. What's inside your head? <laughs> it's real. It's real. Validation. Joshua Naismith. I mean, what do you get me this for? I don't know. I just saw it in the shop. Okay. Sort of thing you should have. That might play a part. <laughs> don't laugh. Infectious. Merry Christmas, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Mm. Will you be? <laughs> Honestly. All right, now. Well, she's on. She's this on. This is delightful. Events are moving, Wilfred. Hey. Faster than we thought. Wait, can, can you see that? No, Frankly, only I you can. Majesty, it's time for our suits. The time will come when you must take arms. Hmm. Who are you? Well, the doctor, nothing of this. His life could still be saved. So long as you tell him nothing. She knows the doctor. I don't know, anything strange, anything odd. Well, there was a, what? The book. What is it? Tell me. Well, it was... No, it's nothing. Think of Naismith. Maybe, maybe something out of the blue, something connected. Coincidence. To something. Well, maybe touching Donna's subconscious. Oh, she's still fighting for it even now. The doctor Donna. Dad, what are you up to? Oh boy. Get out of here. Merry Christmas. Come back here, I said! <laughs> Come back! Are you shouting at thin air? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, What's I am. Oh, right, yes. Bigger on the inside. Do you like it? I, I thought it'd be cleaner. Cleaner? <laughs> So that one lady kept looking at the other guy. The curly hair. Her. She keeps giving the other guy these looks. Miss Adams, if you could bring the calibration statistics. Yep. These two highly suspicious. Insiders. Looking out for him, maybe. You stupid country. I am choking oh. in this thing. Aliens. Sorry, what's a shimmer? Shimmer. <laughs> oh my lord, she's a cactus. <laughs> Who are you though? Because I met someone like you. He was brilliant, but he was little and red. No, it's <laughs> a zotchi. It means whole planets. Ooh. It does what? Transmits the medical template across the entire population. Holy shit. Entire planets? Is he about to bring back Homeless was I? Destitute. Gallifrey. You're grafting your faults inside them, is that it? Oh, that's way too easy. No, no, no. They're not gonna think like me. They're gonna they are? become me. Okay, maybe I overshot with uh, the Gallifrey prediction. I thought he's trying to bring his home back. So, replicating Time Lords. You're starting to remember, Oh, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Or to me? Or to me? Or to, or to us. us. Breaking news. Agent I'm Smith. Everyone. And everyone in the world is me. me. I'm president. The human race was always your favorite, Doctor. Oh, wow. Now, there is no human race. There is only... The Master Race. The Master Race. Yeah. <laughs> Great actor, man. Great actor. But the human race did cease to exist. And became the master then, race. The master had no concept of his greater role in events. It was the day upon which the whole of creation would change forever. This was the day 
the Time Lords return. For Gallifrey. Okay, so. Who are those two in the middle? Okay, that is quite the ending, quite the cliffhanger. Um, it was setting up to that throughout the episode, right? Um, uh, Timothy Dalton, I mean, of course, <laughs> you know, that narrator had quite the gravitas. And of course, that speech at the end certainly had quite the gravitas to it, didn't it? Um, uh, so uh, Gallifrey, <laughs> Time Lords, a lot of them. Uh, so, you know, that's certainly quite exciting, uh, no doubt about it. That's certainly exciting. Yeah, it certainly served as a great uh, cliffhanger, great surprise, uh, a shocker. Um, and yeah, it was building up to that, right? Because it, it revealed the master so early on in the episode. Um, so, you know, it, it did feel like, okay, there's more to this. There's certainly more to this. And of course, you know, in those final moments, it became really clear. Um, you know, uh, the Elder Ood... I believe it was going on about how, um, you know, through the fire, um, through the blood and the darkness, it is returning. He is returning. They are returning. So yeah, this is much larger than just the master's return. And you know, even in the ending there, uh, the narrator, Timothy Dalton, you know, he's stating how even now the master doesn't realize uh, the role he's playing, right? In the grand scheme of things, something along those lines, right? Um, so yeah, you know, the master is clearly crucial, uh, to something or to this return, potential return of the Time Lords or Gallifrey. Could this mean that the master is actually just a pawn in the grand scheme of things for, you know, these Time Lords? Now, you know, as exciting as it was and, uh, you know, it was certainly quite, um, quite shocking, that cliffhanger. Uh, and exciting, of course, you know, Gallifrey. I've been hoping to learn so much more about Gallifrey and the Time Lords, um, but there was something insidious about that, wasn't it, right? That cliffhanger and them, you know, uh, or Timothy, Timothy Dalton's character uh, who seems to be uh, in command, essentially in a, in a position of power. Um, you know, he mentioned the end of time, right? So there is something insidious in nature. I mean, there's a reason the doctor time locked the Time Lords, right? Uh, and uh, the Dalek or the Time War. He time locked the Time War, right? I remember this uh, from... Utopia, I think, maybe? Uh, he was speaking to um, Jack in that chamber, I believe. Or I, I remember he was speaking to Jack about this and he was telling him about this, you know, about time locking the war, the time war. And it does have that feeling that in Tenen's final conflict in his final episode, or, you know, uh, the 10th Doctor's final uh, conflict, he is going to be up against his own kind, the Time Lords, right? Um, now, you know, uh, circling back to... Uh, you know, uh, the master potentially just being a pawn in the grand scheme of things. Uh, again, you know, uh, Timothy Dalton's character mentioning that he doesn't even realize the impact or his importance. Again, something like that. He said something along those lines, right? And of course, you know, this show and this story has already established that, you know, everything has its time and then everything ends, right? This was even before Tenen, uh came on as the Doctor, right? I think this was early in the first few episodes of the series, actually. Uh, of the new series. And let's circle back to the master. Um, you know, this drumming, uh, the, the beat, the, you know, the four beats, the drumming beat. Um, again, you know, it doubles as the heartbeat of the, the doctor as well, or of a time lord. But, you know, he mentioned, uh, I think a couple of times that it's even stronger than it was before, right? It's at its strongest, uh, actually. And of course, you know, there's, I don't think it's just a coincidence that, you know, the time lords apparently are about to make their comeback. And this, you know, the beat, the drum beat in his mind uh, that's been driving him crazy essentially for who knows how long at this point. Um, uh, you know, clearly there's a connection here. And you know, uh, I like the doctor's reaction to actually hearing it and, you know, feeling it. Um, and, you know, the validation the master felt, uh, you know, finally knowing that, okay, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy, even though it drove him essentially crazy. There, clearly there's a connection going on here, right? Some kind of connection here. And also they've already established that at a really young age, the master looked right into the time vortex, right? Uh, that changed him forever. That changed him forever. Um, so yeah, the beats, uh, again, you know, uh, getting much stronger, the strongest they've been, 
at this point. So I, yeah, again, I don't think it's a coincidence at all that, you know, it's getting stronger just as, uh, you know, they show us this cliffhanger of the Time Lords about to make their comeback. But, you know, the funny thing is earlier in the episode, I thought he is trying to bring his hometown back because, you know, some of the verbiage and some of the dialogue maybe uh, made it sound like, okay, oh, 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 okay, that's his grand plan. Maybe he's, he, he figured out how to somehow bring the Time Lords back or something. I mean, essentially there's, uh, millions of Time Lords by the end of this episode, right? Because everyone turned into the Master. Um, I mean, if they are turning into the Master, then you have to assume that, yeah, they are Time Lord, essentially, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, you know, at that point, I did think, okay, it's going to bring back Time Lords um, uh, or Gallifrey somehow, you know, because they kept mentioning him being homeless and uh, all that stuff, right? And then, you know, earlier, uh, or a bit earlier before that scene, uh, the two aliens... Um, they, you know, they mention, oh, no, no, it's not just one. It's on like a large scale, on a planet level scale. So, you know, that all made me think, oh, okay, return of Gallifrey somehow. You know, it turned out that he was just trying to turn everyone into the master. And how on brand, how on brand for the master, right? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and turn everyone into myself. The master race, essentially. Uh, I thought that was completely on brand for the master. And of course, even earlier on, you know, he's reminiscing about Gallifrey, right? So, you know, because of that, I thought, oh, okay, he's bringing Gallifrey back or he's figured out how to bring Time Lords back, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that ended up being something else. But regardless, by the end of the episode, it still ends up being Gallifrey or, you know, a potential return of Gallifrey and the Time Lords. Um, yeah, it was quite it was quite the rousing, uh, you know, cap off to the episode, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, you know, there's that. Um, now, you know, th before I go any further, the episode as a whole... You know, honestly speaking, yeah, it was a bit messy. It was a bit messy. Uh, and, you know, it kind of continues that trend of Davies kind of having these types of episodes and, you know, the f near the finale, essentially. Um, it's a pattern, you know, it's certainly a pattern I've noticed and it's continued into this episode. So, yeah, it kind of continues that pattern of being a bit messy uh, late on, you know, in the la second last episode. Um, uh, the pacing was a bit off. Um, you know, the tone was kind of jumping all over the place as well, you know, tragic, epic, uh, really campy at points. Uh, sometimes those don't mesh. But, you know, that being said, uh, it had a lot of great individual moments throughout the episode, a lot of great standout moments. So I think for that, you know, for as a whole, maybe not the greatest episode, but it did have its moments. And I feel like I'm repeating, yeah, I feel like I'm repeating things I've said about the other, uh, you know, finales or second last episodes leading up to a finale. But yeah, let's see how the second episode plays out. I'm certainly hoping it's uh, a lot better than this episode. Um, I, I think it, I think it is going to be because I, it really did feel like this episode was the setup to that finale. Again, like I mentioned, a lot of setup, maybe you know, uh, a solid amount of filler as well. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm still hopeful that this final episode is going to, you know, provide that emotionally resonant climax to uh, Tenant's run, to the Tenth Doctor, who certainly doesn't want to go, who certainly does not want to go. And, you know, in that sense, he feels so human at this point, right? He's so emotionally open. Um, and again, you know, th that came through uh, one of the best scenes of the episode and one of the best scenes of the entire series for me so far. Uh, you know, uh, again, a return for the wonderful and the delightful Grandpa Wilfred. But it was a great emotional back and forth. Uh, and, you know, of course, a return for Donna as well. You know, the Dr. Donna also made uh, some slight appearances here and there. Uh, you know, leaking through the residual, you know, energy still in there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But the scene itself, uh, yeah, you see that this doctor, uh, he's not ready to die. He's not ready to regenerate even, you know, he's... He's not ready to reinvent himself because he's happy as he is. You know, he's uh, he's sad about potentially losing all the connections he's made uh, and the time he spent here, right? Um, again, you know, it felt really human, uh, really grounded, um, his open reaction to that. And he got quite emotional and he was quite open about being kind of lost out there, right? Traveling alone. And again, it alludes to something that happened in the last episode, the last uh, special, The Waters of Mars, right? He ended up doing some things he regrets and he's quite apologetic over, right? Um, so yeah, again, some fantastic acting in that scene on both ends, right? Great screen partners, um, you know, Grandpa Wilfred and uh, David Tennant. I just, sorry, I apologize. I can't remember the actor's name, but he's wonderful as the grandpa. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was great to actually, actually see him in the companion role in this episode, right? 
uh, and continuing into the next episode as well. But, you know, going back to the Doctor and his mood about this incoming regeneration, you ju- you see how much of tenth, uh, the Tenth Doctor's personality is on display here, right? Um, it wasn't, it's completely different from uh, Eccleston's Doctor, the Ninth Doctor, and I'm guessing it'll be different f- uh, for the next Doctors as well, right? Be it Capaldi, Matt Smith, uh, Jody. Uh, you see that he looks at regeneration as death. He does because... Uh, you know, he framed it as essentially a totally different man who, who comes out the other side, right? And you see the, the reluctance is there that he's not ready to give up on this uh, form, right? He, he likes being this form, right? He likes himself in this form. Um, and, you know, to him, it feels like he hasn't had enough time. So, right, it goes back to that age-old um, saying, right? If only there was more time. So, yeah, I really like that scene in the cafe. Uh, And again, you know, you see uh, Grandpa, um, you know, he tells um, the doctor about Donna that she's doing all right. You know, she's getting by in life. You know, it's not the it's not the happiest life or the greatest life, but she's getting by. But he he senses this residual sadness right in her and that she doesn't even know the reasoning behind this, her sadness sometimes. Right. He's hoping that maybe the doctor can do something for her, you know, bring her back or take her back to the Donna she used to be. Right. Um, so I thought it was a great moment, great back and forth, uh, heart to heart. But of course, you know, Grandpa Wilfred uh, continues to be such a, such an authentic character, such a believable character, uh, really. You know, I, I remember mentioning um, that he feels like an actual person. He really does. Uh, and he's just so endearing, right? Um, so I feel like he kind of carried a lot of this episode, to be honest. Uh, his presence was much needed in this episode. And even Grandpa Wilf is uh, set up as someone important, someone who has a connection to the Doctor. Uh, because, you know, even the Doctor can't quite place his finger on, you know, just why it was so easy for Wilfred to find him, right? Uh, there, There is something bringing them together. There is a connection there. Though, you know, the Doctor kind of slipped into that, uh, you know, uh, mindset for a split second, you know? You know, but why you? Right? Why you? Like he's questioning, you know, what's so important about this man? He's just uh, some human. Kind of goes back to that notion of him uh, referring to some of them as little people, right? Um, I, I felt it was a bit harsh, you know, but again, I could be reading a bit too much into it. I don't know. Uh, but you feel like some of that energy was still in there. Some of that, you know, mood was still in there, right? He's kind of in a, in a funk since that last episode, since that happened. And you see that he tried to, you know, get it out of his system by traveling and having fun, but it's still in there, right? But circling back to the grandpa being important to the doctor, uh, you know, in this episode, and clearly he's going to be important to the doctor in the second episode as well, in the finale. So this ghostly apparition keeps appearing to uh, just Wilfred, right? Just the grandpa. Uh, now, you know, uh, I saw her a few times and I, you know, posed the question, who is this? You know, she, she knew the doctor, right? Once she said, you know, once it became clear that she knows the doctor, then, you know, you saw my reaction. My immediate thought, is this the doctor's mother, right? Um, his late mother, essentially, maybe, or I don't know, you know. she Somehow she's appearing to Wilfred because she knows there is a connection there and she's trying to talk to him. Um, and, you know, she told him not to tell doctor anything. Maybe his life can be saved. Um, yeah, I got the feeling, you know, I was getting a really motherly tone. Um, and, yeah, my first, you know, thought was, is this the doctor's mother? Uh, I, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to be anyone important, but that was my first thought. I mean, she is important, clearly, but uh, that was my first thought, you know, that this could be the doctor's mother, someone from his past, uh, maybe a mentor. But, you know, let me go back to the doctor again. You know, I find it really interesting, his take on the regeneration and his mindset at the moment. Uh, you know, being the doctor for a long, long time and having this take on the regeneration, this mood about it, right? Um, it's nothing new, right? It's nothing new to the doctor as a whole, right? Over multiple regenerations. But, you know, this doctor specifically does not seem to like that at all. Like, he is not ready at all. And, you know, that in itself is probably going to make it even tougher um, to say goodbye to him because, you know, they've already set up. He's not ready to go, right? That He doesn't feel like this is his time. So that that's going, you know, that's going to make it even more uh, sad for me, I think. Once a, once it does kick in. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to make sure to have a, a tissue box close by for that episode. Because I know, man, I know. Even the waters of Mars. I saw a glimpse of Ut Sigma and just that alone, you know, just oh, it hit me hard. 
But yeah, you know, uh, he's also had really human experiences. You know, if you go back to him being John Smith and human nature, right? That that two-parter, that incredible two-parter, you know, he's had some really grounded human experiences. But, you know, that goes back to the notion of each regeneration having uh, a new outlook on the doctor, right? A uh, new set of traits, uh, attributes uh, unique to that doctor. And, you know, number 10, 10th doctor, uh, David Tennant's doctor, um... He is not ready for change, right? He does not want change. He is happy as is, uh, as this doctor, right? Uh, he's not ready to, you know, the doctor at that moment in time is not ready to start from scratch. Um, you know, uh, you could you could even say maybe there's a bit of a pride thing in there, right? A bit of an ego thing in there um, uh, as well. Because essentially it's his this doctor's interpretation of the regeneration, right? Uh, just because he doesn't want to die or, you know, he considers regeneration itself death, essentially, doesn't mean that, you know, past and future doctors are going to have the same outlook on it. Some might be quite accepting of it. You know, maybe some might struggle uh, as well. But yeah, you know, this is a really interesting aspect of the show, of the doctor and his regeneration. Uh, and I think Tennant's really delivering uh, on the acting side of things, right? Um, and, you know, that struggle, the internal struggle of dealing with this incoming regeneration. And it's coming. It's coming all right. And the thing is, you know, that whole thing about the four knocks, he'll knock four times, it didn't really end up going anywhere, right? Unless that in itself was also a misdirect. Uh, they tried it. They tried it in the waters of Mars, right? He knocked three times. They kind of played it. They played into that, but, you know, he didn't knock the fourth. But, in the, you know, in this one, the master certainly knocks four times, and, you know, the whole aspect of the four beats is certainly present throughout the episode right and again it doubles as the the heartbeats of the two hearts uh, in, a, in a time lord uh but yeah you know maybe there's still more to that in the next episode um you know leading up to his ultimate uh you know moment uh the regeneration um or causing you know him to finally entering that regeneration phase so let's see you know he'll knock four times Let's see if that's the end of that or if there's more to that. But yeah, you know, uh, I mentioned the master earlier. Uh, you know, I enjoyed, I certainly enjoyed that performance. But there's also a lot of really campy and goofy elements to it, right? You know, you could even argue that maybe they brought the master back a bit too early, right? Uh, especially given that really poignant death scene, um, uh, you know, in, uh, in the doctor's arms. I thought that was one of the standout moments for David Tennant's run as a doctor, right? That uh, emotional outburst. Um, or his emotional reaction to that, and then him, you know, uh, burning the body. You know, this take on the master, um, you know, some aspects of it are clearly, you know, so over the top. He's turned into a supervillain, essentially, right? I mean, yeah, they explain how he's able to do these things, you know, loosely. They kind of, it is explained, but I don't know. I, I felt like it, you could also argue that it kind of undercuts uh, the master they established the first time around. But yeah, you know, he's also a Time Lord. And, you know, as they've set up, the Time Lords from Gallifrey are about to make a comeback, right? So let's see how he reacts to that. So, you know, just the two Time Lords being here and potentially, you know, having a reunion of sorts or, you know, seeing more of their people, uh, even though, you know, there is something nefarious about this, uh, clearly didn't feel like some, you know, oh, happy moment. Uh, especially set up in a cliffhanger like that, that, you know, the Time Lords are returning. Again, I mentioned earlier, he time-locked them for a reason, right? The Time War. Um, so yeah, it'll be really exciting to see their reactions and how they, uh, you know, take that situation in. I'm sure the Master is go going to be quite happy about this, right? The return of his people. But, you know, he doesn't quite know their intentions. I don't even know their intentions yet, right? The audience doesn't know yet. So let's see. And, you know, a few other things. Um, Donna, of course, I mentioned earlier. Really happy to see her again. Um, you know, that infectious laugh. Oh, my goodness. Earlier, I mentioned those aliens, the green aliens. Um, yeah, nothing really special there, uh, to be honest. But it appears that they are going to be allies to the Doctor and uh, Wilfred uh, from the looks of it. Um, or they are going to team up. And then, of course, there's the father-daughter um, uh, duo. And I, I, I mean... I thought it was a bit of a strange relationship, you know, the, the tone I was getting there, you know, there was some little strange going on there. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it for this episode. Again, bit of a messy episode. Uh, I've come to accept that, you know, some of these finales or two-parters are a bit messy. Uh, but yeah, you know, a lot of great moments, a lot of great setup for the next episode. Essentially, it served as a setup episode for the most part, right? 
Uh, but again, it had a lot of great moments. So if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you're interested in full length for this episode or perhaps even early access to the finale right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. Um, if you're into social media, I'm on Twitter. Okay, so that's about it for this one. Yeah, there it is. Just, you know, just one episode left now. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, I've got a bit of time before I get to that, you know, a few days um, before I get to it. Uh, before I record that episode. So yeah, you know, let's see. Uh, I'm sure I'll be a mess. Uh, but yeah, this is it. Uh, it's leading up to the final goodbye. So thank you for joining me for this episode of Doctor Who. And I hope to see you again for the finale uh, for David Tennant's goodbye. So until then, take it easy.